Alrighty everyone, so as the label says, this is the Halloween Hissing Cockroach. It's missing the genus name, but that is alright. In this video, we're going to talk about the husbandry and the care of El Patorina Javanica, also known as Halloween Hissing Cockroach. From what I know in my experience, they're relatively common. And you can find them at a lot, some pet stores and a lot of websites online for sale. And in my opinion, these are one of the most beautiful hissing cockroaches I've seen. And not only hissers, these are just beautiful cockroaches in general. This is my small colony. I think it has maybe less than 10 hissers in here. And this is my beautiful female here. Now, I'm not going to mess with her because I do not know if she's pregnant right now. And she's really huge. So, she might be gravid and has some eggs, so... We're gonna wait and find out. And just something to notice as their appearance, the males seem to have the horns, like most other common hissers. And these ones are black. And now, if you just saw the female, the females are normally a reddish color, and that's why they're called the black and red. And here's another smaller nymph. And these are actually part of the dwarf species of hissers. There's two different, I guess you could say, genuses. The larger one, which is Gromphodorina, and some other ones, like Van Werebicki. And this is the small species of Elpatorina and Insignis and stuff. So getting into the care, they don't need tons of care, and they're definitely a very good starter cockroach into the hobby. Um, I recommend at least an inch or two of cocoa fiber. I mix in with a bunch of leaves, and they seem to do very well. And I haven't had babies in a while, so they won't crawl through it yet. And these love hiding in these, I believe, mango leaves I have. I can't remember. And I have two pieces of cork bark, which they love to hide under. And you can see, they're kind of hissing. And that's why they are called Halloween hissing cockroaches. Because they make this cool hissing sound to defend from predators. And normally, I just feed these guys every other day. Sometimes every two days. Because I haven't brought it up before. But in their natural habitat, they're from Madagascar, which is, I believe off the southeast coast of Africa. They get fruits and any, and they eat any plants and decaying matter such as ripened fruits and stuff like that. And obviously in the wild, fruits and stuff aren't gonna fall down from a canopy every single day. And I've noticed if you feed them almost every day or every other day, sometimes they won't eat. So that's why I try to mix it up a little while and do um, every two days. And like you've probably heard from many other people, these become quite docile after holding them after a while. It makes them another awesome pet for children. And like I said, they kind of have more redder colors. And the females seem to be larger in size because they have to carry their uthacas, which are the egg cases, because they give live birth instead of laying egg cases around their enclosure. And they're in kind of a relatively small enclosure right now until my colony gets bigger, then I'll move them up in size. But for now, I'm keeping them close to each other so that they can breed. They seem to breed faster when they're closer in range to each other, which is why I have them in a smaller enclosure currently. And when it goes for heating and humidity, if you keep them on a good enclosure with good ventilation on all sides and um, a good top. I don't recommend putting the holes in the top because then the humidity and stuff can escape. And I I recommend a 75 to 80 percent humidity, and they thrive the best in that. It goes heating wise anywhere from 75 to around maybe 90 degrees, depending on how fast you want them to breed. Something to know about these cockroaches: the warmer it is, um, the faster they breed. I've noticed. So I keep mine around. 90 degrees on one side and it gets cooler to like the low 72s and up through there. And here are two of the smaller nymphs that are a few in stars away from being a fully grown adult. And hopefully that happens soon so these produce some babies. As you can see in this, they've been taking a little bites out of these mango leaves. And it says that they can eat some organic leaf materials, but this is the only few leaves that I've seen them eat in my time of having them. And these awesome insects are normally nocturnal. Sometimes they'll come out during the day like this when you're kind of opening their enclosure and stuff. And normally they'll come out at nighttime and eat their food. Sometimes they will. And they also breed better if you keep them in a darker place. I keep a blanket over both of my colonies. I have this Halloween hisser colony and my Madagascar colony which just has a blanket over it to keep it dark and keep in the humidity and heat more. You can breed them from Pretty much a lot of kitchen scraps like apples, carrots, green leaf lettuce, romaine lettuce. I would avoid icebergs since that can kill your cockroaches. 
and these cockroaches seem to really love fish flakes. So I definitely recommend adding that to their diet. And I've also heard that they can eat dried up mealworms and stuff like that. So yeah, the care for these guys are relatively easy and really easy to take care of these guys. And I definitely recommend them as a starter pet cockroach. As you can see, they're just hanging out under this cork log. And they're just chilling. And one issue you can have with higher humidities, you can have mold growth, which is, you do not want that. And it seems like I have that problem right now. As you can see, there is some green mold and some fuzzy mold growing on the bottom. So I'm gonna have to change this and get rid of some of the moisture levels, start missing them less. And also something I would like to talk about is um, a main cause of your cockroaches dying could be dehydration. So I recommend just getting a damp paper towel and leaving it near their food dish, anywhere in the enclosure. And they seem to drink off that. I also recommend misting the sides and these cockroaches will actually come up and drink the water droplets. So I have them out in their enclosure, and here's kind of just a size comparison between the males and the females and how they kind of look different. And like I said, these guys are really pretty and beautiful animals, and they're definitely one of the more handsome cockroaches in the hobby. And the females, I really love the colors on with their oranges, their yellows, and their blacks. And these ones seem to hide more than some of the other hissers in the hobby. But these guys are very chill. They don't hiss as loud as many other hissers do. But after breeding is done, and after 60 days, the females will have up to 60 babies in just one litter is what I call it. And so these colonies can produce really fast, but it takes around almost a year for them to be fully grown. So it takes time to build a colony of these guys, but if you maintain it for a while, it will become an extraordinary colony and it'll become huge. So it takes time to build up a colony of these guys, but it's definitely worth it to see the beauty of these cockroaches.